what do you suggest that someone does? Do you have them just concentrate on their breath for three minutes a day? Just sit and be quiet, in breath, out breath? What? Okay, so meditation is in two phases, really. The first phase is called calmness. Shamatha is its proper name, calmness meditation. And the idea is you become less reflexively reactive. Now, it's literally like you have a glass of water with a bit of dust in it. You could, if you're always doing this all the time, the water. And just for burning. everybody who's listening, Richard is um, is stirring up uh, his glass with yeah, his I'm hand. Up my glass. This, with is my the lawyer in, this is the lawyer in me, like it, describing what you're doing. Go ahead. All right, so I'm stirring up a glass of water. Yes. Hole, and the water is turbulent and you can't see through it. If you just stick that water on a shelf and walk away and come back in half an hour, the dust has settled. The water is clear. That is the second type of meditation. It's called vipassana. Pasana means seeing, and V means clearly or discriminating. It's clear seeing. Now, clear seeing is the result of shamatha, calmness. If you become calm, you become clear. If you're not calm, you cannot be clear because you're being stirred up. Now, remember, all we get is either the five senses or thoughts and imaginations. The six gates, it's called. Really simple, six gates. The way we begin is to take one of those gates. It doesn't actually matter which. One of those gates, forget the other five, concentrate on one, and begin to develop our ability to direct our attention. So we become less reactive. Now, I actually start the book with the visual gate. That's the stuff that comes through your eyes. And what I say is look at a candle. And the reason for this is to simply for three minutes, look at a candle, a real candle, not a picture of a candle, not a video of a candle, a real candle, get one and light it, and then look. And what will happen every time you start looking, a thought will come or a noise will go and your attention, because you're reactive, will immediately shift away. No, 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 I want to come back and look at my candle. And three minutes is a long time. When you do something like that, you know, three minutes is nothing. Trust me, look at a candle for three minutes and you'll be going, wow, this is forever. Um, but as you do this over the course of a week, gradually your attention will come to the candle and stay there. Now, this is the first step. Now, I could have begun with any one of the senses, but the visual sense is a particularly interesting one because we are very visually dominated. We have binocular vision. Things catch our attention visually all the time. So the visual, vision is a good place to start, to start concentrating your attention. Then, having done that, we go further with another exercise in the second week that examines what attention is. Because attention is not well understood by most people, what attention is really made of. And again, we need to know that so we can stabilize our attention and not be so reflexively reactive. So this is a very deliberate approach, but it only takes three minutes. And um, what I always say to people is, look, I'll explain everything I want you to do, why you might do it, what the benefit is. All you have to do is do it. And the deal is this. The problem is because I only receive what comes through my five senses, thoughts and imaginations, and you only receive what comes through your five senses, thoughts and imaginations, I can't show you what a meditation term means. So I can't show you shamatha, like I might be able to show you a brick or a watch or anything else. It's not an object in the world. I have to lead you into an experience so you know what shamatha is. Just like I couldn't tell you what chocolate was by giving you a bunch of words. It's sweet, it's sticky, it's a bit oily, it's brown. None of that tells you what chocolate was. I have to give you a piece of chocolate. Then you go, oh, I know what chocolate is. It's like that. So this book is designed to give you the taste of meditation so that the actual experiences have a referent that you yourself know because you have experienced them. And that's, again, a great that's a great analogy. You know, I can't tell you. Stuff. I can't. Yeah, I can't tell you what chocolate is. You have to experience it. Yeah. That's that's a great one. Um, what do you hope people will get out of fourteen weeks of three minutes a day? Well, my hope is if they go through these fourteen weeks, they will land up with a stable meditation practice, 
which they can fall back on anytime. Now, the reason for the three minute thing is because meditation is really valuable in your working day. Yeah. It, you know, people meditate on, I meet people say, oh, I meditate eight hours a day. The truth is, if you just sit on a cushion all the time, what use is that? Is if the moment you get off your cushion, you go back to being reflexively reactive. It's not much, you, not much use to you at all. What you really want is a practice that can help you while you're being stressed and disturbed and pulled this way and that. Mm-hmm. So my hope is at the end of the 14 weeks, people will have access to a practice. To a, it, That's why it's, sometimes I say welcome to a calm place. Access to a center they can fall back into. Now, this is not to say, oh, I'm making a little castle within which I can sit and kind of hide from the world. Because actually the calmness we are seeking is within experience. Yeah, It's not away from experience. It's within it. And again, understanding how we can be calm and yet be in experience is one of the greatest discoveries you can make, honestly. It's, it's And it's so true. And I can go back to when my son said something or, or, you know, somebody says something and I feel that reaction in me. I can close my eyes, breathe into it. And I don't react. You I'm know. just, I just, I feel it. If I'm not meditating, I'm reacting yeah. and I don't have to go there. You don't have to I go there. Separate, I can separate from it and I get the balance that you talk about. And I, when I started giving myself permission, even now, my kids are now, I've got a graduate. I've got the one that's just started his junior year and in everything. And I have, you could say I have time, but I don't, I don't know how much time I actually have, but I give myself permission. Oh, I only have 10 minutes. That's fine. You know, I give myself permission. I don't have to put my tush on a cush for 45 minutes every day. You know, like it's what time I have. It's made so much difference so that I still, and and since I saw the title of your book, I went, oh, that's right. I can take three minutes. Mm -hmm. I don't have to. I remember those days and uh, it all works. And your head, I love the first instruction I was ever given is um, you can't do meditation wrong. I, I was told that, and that was, I'm so glad that's the first instruction. But when you said the candle part, I have to share. That's, I remember sitting down and listening to a thing, put your candle here, do this. I went, wait, put the candle where? And and that left brain lawyer part of me went, wait, where is it supposed to be? And I was so, I didn't know which side, where am I putting it? I was still so stuck on where the candle was supposed to be and where like, I, I had to be exact. <laughs> You took the right path. Yeah, you need to understand the basis. Uh, Once people understand the basis, once they understand the six gates, this is such an important idea. And you know, how many of I was educated, you know, I only discovered this truth about the world really when I was in my late middle age. I always thought there was a real world because we're told there's a real world. But the honest truth is, this real world is an inference. And that's why scientists keep changing their mind about what it is. They keep saying, well, actually, maybe it's this or maybe it's that. They, all we have are events. And we're making a map based upon those events. And we're calling it the world. And you're not know, surprisingly, people fight over it because they don't really know what they're talking about. And unless we can get back to the actuality of our experience, we're always going to be confused. And it is it is remarkable. Three minutes. That's all it is. Just three minutes. And I wrote this book for mums and for guys, you know, not meditators. I'm not really that interested in meditators. I really wanted to find people who just feel stressed. 